Hi folks, my name is Vishnu. I work as an engineer in the Infra and Tools team at Asura. Asura is an open source project that is used to build graphical APIs. So if you are into graphical APIs, it might be interesting to you. Uh, I have been working on developer tools for most of my career. Especially at Asura, I have been building developer tools for developers who are building developer tools. And uh, I'll link my website here just in case if you'd like to reach out to me at some point. And of course, uh, feel free to read my random writings over uh, that I have done over the past few years. Today, I'd like to take you on a world tour of our dynamic pipelines. So let's get started. <laughs> so here's the journey of how we uh, arrived at dynamic pipelines and stuff. So in December 2020, we created our first, uh, our monorepo. It was not on Bilkite and uh, our team was fast growing. And uh, so, so was the number of builds and our CI build. <laughs> uh, on top of it, there was this complex CI configuration, which was over uh, 2000 lines of YAML. And we had been in this state for eight months. And finally, in August 2021, we sat down and started thinking about what we can do better. So the first thing that occurred to us, occurred to us was uh, we need to decrease the CA cost because uh, if we leave it at that uh, point, uh, it might incur us a huge bill in some point in future. So uh, we started thinking about what we can do to reduce our CA cost. Uh, two things were obvious. One was uh, trying to run builds on our own infrastructure and bringing down the build times uh, might uh, reduce the CA cost substantially. And the second uh, goal that we had in mind was to improve the maintainability of the CA configuration. But we weren't exactly sure on how we are going to do it. Uh, we just had one thought that is to not use YAML this time around <laughs> uh, because it was uh, too brittle and uh, very much declarative to whatever we wanted to express while running our pipelines. If not YAML, then what, <laughs> right? Uh, so we had started that research at that point and uh, we had collected all these languages uh, which might be uh, a good fit for us. Uh, and I started doing that research by talking to other people uh, and stuff. So we, we ended up with three main categories. One were the config languages, which are friends of YAML. And uh, there was dynamically typed languages and uh, statically typed languages. Right? So all these config languages, uh, they are very similar to YAML, but uh, there were quite some interesting ones like Q and DAL. Uh, so uh, they are pretty interesting uh, at that point and uh, dynamic languages did most of the stuff in runtime and uh, we weren't sure whether we'd get the guarantees that we liked so uh, but we really like that it's easy to write and stuff uh, and at the same time statically typed languages there are a lot of statically typed languages i just listed four of them which our uh, team might be comfortable with uh, for example, like Haskell is something that a lot of members in Hasura uh, are writing uh, regularly. So uh, it was also a valid candidate for us. Uh, but while doing this analysis, we knew that we want to write it in some language other than YAML. And uh, but we weren't sure like uh, how a CI provider would pick up a config written in uh, some other language, uh, maybe a real programming language, right? So at that point, we are also exploring CI providers and uh, Billkite was one of them. Uh, we ended up looking at this particular feature called dynamic pipelines from Billkite. Uh, and uh, it answered our question that uh, we can write real programming language uh, CI configuration, which could be picked up by CI providers. So what are dynamic pipelines? Uh, usually when you are writing your CA configuration, you would just write it in a YAML or some config language. But instead of it, what if we wrote a 
program that generates that CI configuration, that YAML file or JSON file, and out, outputs it, right? So step one of dynamic pipelines is writing such a program which generates uh, the actual CI config, and then you can uh, upload it to the CI provider so that the rest of the build gets populated with uh, whatever jobs you like. For example, all our CI pipelines just have this one step uh, defined, uh, which is which just has one step called generate pipeline. And there, the first section is we run a program which outputs uh, a config.json file, which contains the jobs that we would like to schedule. And then we just upload it to the build kite agent. So all the builds start with start by just running this one job and they will expand to other jobs once uh, the generate pipeline is complete. Right. For example, in this case, somebody from our uh, front-end team is uh, trying to run a pipeline in their PR. So uh, they're just run, uh, running all the front-end related uh, jobs that are of interest to them. Uh, and most of the time it just uh, expands into like this big pipeline especially if it's touching a lot of components and stuff. Uh, and sometimes it's just a section of these pipelines based on uh, the the, uh, the PR uh, author's uh, opinion, uh, this, this generation could happen. And now uh, we knew that we can write CA configurations in programming languages. Uh, now it was time to choose a language and we ended up choosing Go because uh, it is statically typed. Uh, we'll see what kind of benefits it gives uh, because of this particular property. And uh, it was easy and simple. And it had awesome tools like Go Run, Get, Build, uh, which were like very mature. And it has awesome IDE support, uh, editor support. Uh, and our team was also familiar with it at that point and uh, it had fairly good, uh, a decent uh, comfort editing those files. Right. So here's an example of YAML versus Go. Uh, in the left is the YAML configuration, which has two, uh, two jobs, job A and job B. Job B is dependent on job A. The same thing is expressed in, in Go here in, on the right. Uh, if you notice, uh, we had made sure that the DSL library uh, has like one-on-one -on -one mappings with uh, whatever build kite documentation says like for example key label command all these properties are present in uh, are defined by the build kite uh, docs right so we had done the exact same mapping so that people feel comfortable adding new fields uh, and uh, generally like it, it gives the feel of just writing YAML but it's just not YAML. Uh, all right, so the step one of unbundling our 2000 lines of YAML was to write each of those steps in separate files. So we created uh, each step in, a, in its own separate file and uh, each of the pipeline definitions in, in, in separate files and had two packages for uh, each of them. Now that kind of, uh, gives us interesting possibilities. Uh, one was, it became very easy to jump between steps and pipelines. For example, I have a step key here uh, for, a, for a step. And if I just press control and click on this in VS code, uh, it will give me all the references uh, to that particular uh, step. So from, from this references, I can easily f figure out which pipelines are using that step and which steps are dependent on those steps, right? So writing code and uh, reading CI configs became very easy uh, with this kind of support. And this was the very, uh, uh, this was the, uh, the best thing that came out of this project. It was uh, strict guarantees. So let's say that I, I have deleted a job, but that job was uh, dependent was a dependency for many other jobs right and I forgot to remove the references of the job now uh, if I do something like this in our current setup what would happen is uh, if you try to run 
uh, our CI generating program in local, uh, it would just throw compiler errors. And you don't have to push CI configurations every time to, uh, you know, as a commit and trigger a build to actually test the CI configs. Instead, a lot of validation can happen at compile time in your uh, local development. So this is what these statically typed languages uh, help us achieve. And uh, uh, this is particularly interesting because I've seen people, developers, uh, use this kind of flow where they just edit, uh, like add like five, four jobs uh, or remove some jobs or edit jobs with, with support of uh, running things locally. Uh, and it had been like generally uh, very nice to uh, have it in our toolkit. So other thing is, uh, it seems like we can start reusing steps between pipelines since we have defined them separately uh, and self-contained them. For example, this is our uh, this is one of our bi-weekly release pipelines. Uh, here, if you notice, there is a job which publishes some uh, front-end assets, uh, and the same job is getting used in a different pipeline called a hotfix pipeline, which could be triggered at any point in time uh, if the front-end team wants to fix some critical bug fixes. So it's the same code, uh, it's the same job, it's just attached to two different pipelines. Uh, so this kind of reuse was uh, easier now. And next thing is this ahead of time testing. So uh, this used to be a problem for us, especially when we are uh, doing that 2000 lines of YAML. Uh, Let's take this pipeline, for example, this is a, this is again the same bi-weekly pipeline, uh, which uh, there is a release gate job, which gets triggered once all the tests pass. Uh, whatever is present before the release gate runs on every PR builds and main branch builds. Whatever is present after the release gate, they just run during the uh, release bi-weekly, right? So, uh, what would uh, happen often is like if somebody introduced a new job here or they modified some logic in jobs uh, after release gate, uh, we would get to know it only on the release day and we would fix it on the release day. Right? That was uh, that was not a very pleasant experience. And we had started thinking like how we can prevent that kind of errors. Right? Uh, it seems like plain old uh, unit tests were the answer to that. Uh, for example, in this pipeline, we are pushing multiple uh, Docker manifests, right? And this unit test, what it does is it just make sure that all the manifests that we like uh, are getting generated, right? We have jobs for each of them and each of those jobs are getting inputs of right manifest names, right? So, Another thing that we did was uh, for every job after release kit, we also created a separate pipeline, uh, which would trigger just that job or a set of related jobs too. Right? In that way, if something goes wrong, uh, we can write a fix in a different pull request uh, in a different branch and uh, trigger that that pipeline, which just triggers that release kit, uh, that release job. Uh, so that it's faster to uh, fix problems and also uh, we get a PR ready to get it merged. So we started with that kind of workflow, uh, but it, we figured out that writing unit tests and uh, we, we do run these tests in the generate pipeline step. So if something is going wrong, we would catch it even before the pull request uh, gets merged. Uh, which was uh, pretty nice, like going from uh, f fixing it on release day to uh, fixing it even before the PR gets merged was uh, uh, was was really good. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to this concept called recursive dynamic pipelines. By the way, uh, I just invented this terminology uh, while preparing the slides. So it seems like uh, when you generate a 
pipeline like this in a job there could be new jobs and those jobs in turn could again generate a program which could upload the ci config and schedule more jobs in the rest of the build uh, so this kind of uh, this way of using dynamic pipeline seems to be uh, very helpful in some complex scenarios for example i'm going to show you our uh, uh, by weekly release pipeline that we do which uses this technique so we have this job which generates the uh, the the build right so it generates most of this for example uh, there is a job which builds uh, an ami and there is a job which which uh, so this is a manual gate which needs to be unblocked to deploy to our staging environment and uh, if you see there is another job called generate deploy configs which is going to look at all the clusters that we have running in our staging and uh, uh, generate new build kit jobs for each of those clusters and uh, schedule them right so for example the same generate deploy uh, configs job for prod is here uh, it's not uh, you know it's not run yet so uh, only when we unblock this manual gate uh, it will go ahead and uh, uh, you know generate the deploy configs for all the clusters in our prod right so this is the second uh, build kite upload that's happening right so with this kind of uh, dynamism uh, what it enables is for example we use concurrency limits right? for example if there are 50 clusters uh, using build kite concurrency would just uh, like deploy three three clusters so that we don't uh, uh, you know uh, overload our api during developments sorry deployments so these kind of neat uh, use cases uh, this dynamic recursive dynamic pipeline helps us and uh, finally uh, if you'd like to try out uh, whatever we have discussed so far uh, we have uh, built and open sourced uh, the go D dsl library that we uh, that that was our uh, past one and a half years of learning so do check it out and uh, uh, and try it out and and especially like uh, there are new tools coming up like dagger and stuff where uh, i'm noticing that uh, this kind of library based and uh, you know programming language based configuration of ci uh, is being enabled so i think uh, this is going to be uh, the new norm for uh, building larger pipelines and stuff all right all right uh, thank you thank you for uh, tuning in i, I hope yeah, you have a good conference uh, thanks